Meera Sirodi, postgraduate trainee in Kim's Bhubaneswar. And my topic is role of MI spectroscopy in the evaluation of interaction brain tumors. Introduction. Interaxial brain masses are a significant health problem and present several imaging challenges. These lesions include primary neoplasms, high and low grade, secondary metastatic neoplasms, lymphoma, tumor factor demyelinating lesions, abscesses, and encephalitis. We are witnessing a shift in imaging from merely providing anatomical information towards providing information about tumor physiology. MR imaging in particular has emerged as the imaging modality most frequently used to evaluate intracranial tumors, and it continues to have an ever-expanding multifaceted role. The role of MR imaging in the workup of intraaxial tumors can be broadly divided into tumor diagnosis and classification, treatment planning, and post-treatment surveillance. In addition to conventional MR imaging techniques, a variety of advanced techniques have found their place in clinical practice. These techniques offer more than just anatomic, anatomic information provided by conventional MR imaging sequences by generating physiological data and information on chemical composition. A few of the advanced techniques include perfusion imaging, diffusion-weighted imaging, MR spectroscopy, and bold imaging. The aims and objectives were to determine the biochemical markers of intraaxial brain tumors using MR spectroscopy, to evaluate the role of MR spectroscopy in diagnosing and breeding of intraaxial brain tumors with histopathological correlation, and to evaluate the role of MR spectroscopy in determining the infiltrated nature of the intraaxial brain tumors. Materials and methods. 30 patients with clinically suspected brain tumors referred to the Department of Radio Diagnosis and Games was included in the study. It was a hospital-based descriptor study. Equipment and technique used were uh, MRI scans were performed using GE Signa HD XT 1.5 Tesla MRI scanner machine. The sequences taken were conventional spin echo sequences, axial T1, T2 flare, coronal T2, sagittal T1, post contrast T1 axial, coronal and sagittal, TWI, SV Press 144, SV Press 31 single box spectroscopy, 2D Press 144. Multiboxing spectroscopy performed at TE of 144 millisecond and 31 milliseconds and TR of 2000 milliseconds. In single voxel study, the in single voxel studies, the voxel is placed on the lesion so that it covers the maximum area of the solid tumoral area. In multiboxing spectroscopy, the voxel was extended to cover the perilesional area in selected cases of high grade tumors, avoiding area of cysts or necrosis, and with minimal contamination from the surrounding non tumoral tissue. Volume of interest ranged between 1.5 cross 1.5 cross 1.5 centimeters and 2 cross 2 cross 2 centimeter cube. Spectroscopy was avoided in small lesions close to bones and sinuses. In closing criteria, all patients with known history of intraaxial brain tumors, all patients who were incidentally diagnosed with intraaxial brain tumors by CT and clinically detected cases. Exclusion criteria, cases with benign lesions after histopathological confirmation. Patients having history of claustrophobia, history of metallic implant insertion, cardiac pacemakers in foreign body, and clinically unstable patients. The discrete analysis was done using Microsoft Excel data sheet. An analysis was done using EPI Info7 software. Descriptive statistics, frequencies, and proportions were calculated and tabulated. An open EPI software was used to calculate sensitivity, specificity, negative predictive value, positive predictive value and diagnostic accuracy to test the validity of spectroscopy with respect to histopathological examination. Fisher exact test was the test of significance for categorical data. A value of less than 0 0.05 was considered as statistically significant. Observation and result. So this is a table one which showed distribution of sample according to age. As we can see here, approximately 16% or majority of the patients lie between 41 to 50 years age group. Now, this is table two, which shows a distribution of sample according to gender. 70% of the population was male, while the remaining was female. Distribution based on the location. Approximately 70% of the population had supratentorial tumors. 20% had infratentorial tumors and 6% had both supra and infra. This is a table showing distribution of sample based on T1-weighted imaging characteristics. Approximately 40% of the lesions were hypointense, 36% were heterointense, and 20% were isointense. Characteristics based on T2-weighted imaging showed 
approximately 60% of lesions being T2 hetero intense, 30% as T2 hyper intense, and 6% as T1 iso intense. This is a table which showed a uh, proportion of brain tumors which showed blooming on T2 mediated imaging or GRE. Approximately 53% of the lesions showed blooming, while 46% did not show blooming. Blooming, and out of them as well, approximately 92% were bleeds, and the remaining 7% were uh, calcifications. This is a table which shows distribution of the sample size based on edema. Approximately 80% of the lesions had perinatal edema, while 20% did not. This is a table showing distribution of uh, brain tumors based on contrast enhancement. 60% of the lesions showed intense contrast enhancement, while 16% showed moderate and 20% showed mild enhancement. This is a table showing the distribution based on solid and cystic component of brain tumors. 60% of the tumors were solid cystic, while the remaining 36% were only solid. Distribution based on characteristic of tumor margins. Uh, we found 50% of the tumors to be well defined, while 46% were ill defined. Now, this is a table showing distribution of samples based on the spectroscopic findings. The metabolites, 30% uh, of the cases showed increased cooling. 30% of them showed reduced NA and creatinine ratio. Approximately 60%, uh, sorry, 100% showed uh, reduced NA and creatinine ratio. 60% showed increased lipid and lactate. 90% showed reduced or absent myoinositol. 100% showed increased choline creatinine. And 100% showed increased choline and NA ratios. This is the same description in the form of this um, bar graph. And this is a table which shows uh, distribution of cases according to pathology. We found 50% of the cases to be high-grade glioma, while the remaining were distributed among low-grade oligodendroglioma, glyometrophy cerebri, epidermoma, and other lesser common ones. This is a table showing distribution of cases uh, based on MRI diagnosis and correlation with histopathology. So almost all of the MRI diagnosis correlated well with histopathology. So 85% of them correlated with histopathology. And this is a table showing sensitivity, specificity, and uh, various values with the histopathological diagnosis. So discussion, uh, MRX is a means of non-invasive physiological imaging of the brain, which measures absolute and relative levels of various brain tissue metabolites. Uh, MRX presents the individual information as metabolite peak amplitude versus frequency, where frequency can be expressed as absolute values of hertz, or better, what we use is relative units of PPM. This relative amount and chemical structure determine the amplitude and frequency of a particular metabolite peak. And this phenomena of chemical shift forms the basis of MR spectroscopy. These are the various normal metabolites, which can be read on a, a MR spectrum graph, which is shown here. It is usually read from right to left. The first peak which we get to see is lipid peak, followed by the lactate peak. Then we have the NA peak, followed by creatinine peak, and then the choline peak, and finally the myopinositol peak. Uh, talking about all of them uh, briefly. So NA, it is the most specific marker of viable neurons. We get to see the peak at uh, two parts per million. Uh, the ability to quantify neuronal loss or damage in vivo is one of the most important potential applications of MRS. And NA can be reduced in multiple conditions like degenerative disorders and MS and stroke. We get to see the peak at 3 and 3.9 ppm, but the main peak is at 3 ppm. It is used as an internal standard to which the resonance intensities of other metabolites are normalized. And a focal decrease of creatinine can be seen in acute destructive pathologies like malignant tumors. Choline or TNA peak, uh, it is a peak which consists of several soluble components of brain myelin and fluid cell membranes. And as most choline containing brain uh, constituents are not normally soluble, Pathological alternations and membrane turnover uh, in conditions like tumors and MS result in massive increase in MR, MRS visible choline. This is followed by the myoinositol peak. Uh, it is mostly a diagnostic modifier and it is an astrocyte marker in osmolite, which contributes specificity in dementia diagnosis. Uh, glutamate and uh, glutamine peak, commonly called GLX, uh, it is a mixture of closely related amino acids. Uh, it's an integral product of the Krebs cycle, and it is a vital marker in imaging of stroke, lymphoma, hypoxia, and many metabolic disorders. Lipid and lactate peaks. Uh, lipid peak is seen at 0.9 to 1.4 ppm, while lactate is seen at 1.3 ppm. Lipid peak can be seen in tubercular granulomas and brain tumors, uh, wherein lipid indicates necrosis. And lactate peak uh, is generally peak. It is a product of anaerobic glycolysis, and it is seen in uh, conditions like mitochondrial myopathies. But in tumors, it can be a marker of tumor aggressiveness. 
So MRS and intraaxial pain tumors, there are two classes of spatial localization techniques for MR spectroscopy, which includes single voxel techniques, that is press and steam, and multi-voxel technique, also called MRSI or chemical shift imaging, CSI. These spontaneously record spectra from multiple regions and thereby map out the spatial distribution of metabolites within the brain. While both of them have their own advantage, a key consideration for brain tumors is their metabolic inhomogeneity, and high-resolution MRSI is therefore favored for evaluating brain tumor metabolism. Uh, although MRI is a more sensitive modality for detection of brain tumors, its specificity is low, and several different types of tumors may share the same MRI appearance. Uh, therefore, the typical uh, spectrum of a neoplasm depicts a substantial elevation of choline, reduction of NA, and minor changes in creatinine. A high choline to NA ratio is a strong indicator of a higher grade neoplasm. A ratio of more than 1.3 is reported to have a high accuracy for detection of neoplasm. Since tumors are completely heterogeneous with necrotic cores, proliferative rims, and invasion of surrounding brain tissue, the spectrum can vary greatly depending on the region that is sampled. Therefore, the region of interest chosen for analysis has a large influence on the results. And therefore, MRSI is generally considered preferable since it allows metabolic heterogeneity to be evaluated. The role of MRS in tumor versus non neoplastic lesions uh, is uh, of immense importance. If a lesion can be confidently diagnosed as neo non neoplastic, invasive brain biopsy procedures can be avoided. Uh, this differentiation is very difficult using conventional MRI techniques. The use of contrast agents is also not good enough to uh, tell about the various, to differentiate between non-neoplastic and neoplastic since uh, it is based on the disruption of that brain barrier and not all tumors enhance. In general, spectra from brain abscess, that is non-neoplastic conditions, are very different than those from high-grade neoplasms. Brain abscesses will usually have low choline signals as well as decreased NA creatinine, and they also exhibit increased signals from amino acids, which are usually not seen in neoplasms like alanine, acetate, acetoacetates, and succinate. Therefore, distinction between abscess and neoplasm is made quite straight, straightforward using MRS. But the role of MRS in treatment planning is also very important uh, since uh, non-invasive diagnosis in glioma patients is important because it helps in prognosticating and providing a therapeutic plan. Proton MRSI and other physiological imaging techniques assist the surgeons in obtaining representative samples from the tumor tissue for histology and surgical resection. Uh, this helps in planning targeted radiotherapy as well as to differentiate residual or recurrent tumor from radiation necrosis on follow-up. Multimodality MRI imaging using, that is MRSI, potentially provides information which aids to stratify patients into high or low risk groups for clinical trials. MRS also has a role in identification of active tumor and tumor invasion. The goal of neuro-oncology is complete removal of tumor. Therefore, knowing the exact tumor borders is very important, which becomes very difficult in high-grade tumors. By evaluating metabolic abnormalities, proton MRS can help in enhancing the diagnostic yield of stereotactic brain biopsy. The role of uh, MRS in biopsy is basically to recognize the regions of high metabolic activity, that is, regions with elevated choline levels and low NA levels, which is indicative of tumor tissue, representing a good target for biopsy. And regions with low levels may indicate radiation necrosis or gliosis or macrophage infiltration. MRS plays a role in uh, delineation of the target volume uh, for radiation therapy as well. So uh, patients with high-grade gliomas can receive high dose to the areas of active tumor and uh, regions which, which are suspicious for infiltration are treated with lower doses. <laughs> so in conclusion, accurate grading of gliomas on the basis of MRS alone can be very difficult. Combining MRS with conventional and other MRI advanced techniques uh, leads to more precision in the grading. Some features of tumors on conventional MRI, that is enhancement surrounding edema, hemorrhage, suggest high grade. But MRS is uh, complementary and helpful for grading. High grade gliomas demonstrate marked elevation of choline, reduced NA, and presence of lactate and lipid. Ionositol can be high in low grade tumors, and it decreases with increasing rates of tumors. From our study, we conclude that in vivo MR spectroscopy can be used as a reliable method for glioma grading. It is useful in discrimination between WHO grade 2 and 3 and 4 astrocytomas, as well as other interactional brain tumors like gliomatosis cerebri, ependymoma, medulloblastoma, oligodendroglioma, lymphoma, meds, and choroid plexus papilloma. Our study also demonstrates that spectroscopic MR measurements in peritumoral region can be used to demonstrate differences in solitary meds and high grade gliomas, and also peritumoral infiltrative nature of certain interactional brain tumors. These are my references. Thank you.